Maybe that's not for another kind of thing. Hey guys, how's it going to be? Yes, you're on energy. Energy. That's kind of what we want, right? Energy. Is that what we said? <laughs> Fortunate, uh, uh, the fortunate privilege of uh, building some rapport. Um, everyone, by the way, my name is Aaron G. Thompson. I'm from ghostcrier.com. We're a full functional online uh, unit, really, ghost hunting team. We have Jared rocking the camera right over there. Um, he's our art director. Everyone upon our team, the Ghost Crier, has a specific role that we, uh, that we utilize to uh, not only assist with our passion, but uh, kind of complement the entire team. And then we have Kelly, uh, who's our event coordinator. She's also um, into metaphysical, which is very uncomfortable for me because I'm so science-based, right? So to, to allow someone to say, oh, I sense this, drives me insane. But for whatever reason, we go side by side with the tools, and it works. And I'm okay with this. Ghostcrier.com, that's our website. You can really view all of our social media stuff. Vidi.space is a Netflix style uh, platform launched in January by Nick Groff as well as Elizabeth Saint um, and one other, which positions uh, investigators and, and talent to really self promote their own um, their own vision, their own series. So there's no overhead of a producer saying what I can and can't do when I do my uh, investigations. We're very scientific based. We're not your scary ghost hunters. Let's turn it off in the dark, guys. Demons everywhere. That's not us. Um, <laughs> we get negative energy. We understand the, the real dangers of the film. Um, but we also understand that we don't need to keep that consciousness state in a funk. Um, if there's been a tragic event, instead of, of meeting that energy and, and asking the why, is, how did it happen, how does it make you feel, let's scratch that. Let's lift them up and play games. Let's get them to react. Let's let's get more I love yous and I hate yous, you know, going on. We we get a lot more of those. A lot of people <laughs> internet, internet, they have they have words, you know, sometimes. You, you guys don't take it serious enough. Well, <laughs> Um, we are taking the quantum physics, guys. Um, so we're we're doing a little bit. Mind you, I'm so far out of my comfort zone. A lot of this, what I'm what I'm uh, working with. Um, at the same time, no one's really challenging themselves to feel they should because it's all the data is there. Um, let's give you an example of when you ask an entity, uh, you know, what year is it? And they give you 2000 or 2000. We'll say. Beginning 1923, right? Well, they're intelligent. They responded to you, but why did they say that year? Was that the year that, that they passed away? What would cause that mental state and that, that perpetual situation? Well, I know the speed of light is uh, two, what, two billion of a nanosecond, right? <laughs> right, Jared? Um, sure. Sure. So, if you go fast enough, quantumly, you can uh, tiny freezes, if not, it goes back a little bit. Um, so what if, what if they're in those wild waves beyond the points that we can actually measure at this point, and they are going that fast, maybe consistently, um, we're just catching breezes or moments, echoes, as, as I'm kind of pointing uh, a version of quantum physics called uh, echo terrestrial quantum physics. Um, there's going to be a lifetime build-up process, no doubt, no doubt. Um, but I'm passionate enough to challenge myself to see what's going on in there. Um, and even if you look at haunting scenarios, haunting scenarios and playbacks from the past, they just loop, uh, not interactive, and they can go through doors. Uh, they can rise, they can, they can challenge the environment the way that it used to be, and not, not an interactive form. Well, if you look at the world of quantum physics, the alpha, the alpha, beta, gamma, we don't mess with beta, gamma, laser, that'd be bad. Uh, but we do play around of all of us do. They're, they're everywhere. Um, beams from, from space, as well as our cell phone signals and so forth, radio signals, they go through walls. They, they have that, uh, the frequency, the, the wavelength, um, to, to penetrate the walls. Um, so if you just kind of step back, and I, 
unfortunately, it seemed like I waited way too long to think outside the box on this one. It's been a few years ago when I probably stepped back and was like, something's weird. We haven't moved forward very much uh, in the last, you know, 20 plus years. Actually, probably the 60s, 70s, when ITC, which was Intertrans, uh, uh, Intertrans, what? I can't think of it. Uh, ITC, Intertrans, Internet, Inter. Uh, instrumental transcommunication. That was a tough word. Have a moment. I get three of them, right, guys? That's one. So, what I wanted to do here, I'll write down today, is really just do a, a QA session. Um, so often I go off into a, a lovely category and I don't give enough uh, room to do the QA. Might you, you can ask anything. I'm a haunting poltergeist, spirit, ghost, uh, paranormal, that's my world right from there. Um, if you guys have any questions about that, trust me, I will have an answer of some sort. Um, so, I will start off with a question. A lot of people ask me this, and we'll kind of bounce off of that. Um, what's my scariest, kind of scariest thing? Right, you want to do an investigation. Um, have you guys ever been bit by a deer? No. You don't want to. You don't want to. Try sneaking up on one of those bad boys. <laughs> I, luckily, I was not, but it did charge, and that's why we were running shoes. So, <laughs> it's all about safety, guys. We closed our shoe lessons. Um, so, yeah, physical things are so much more scarier than those unseen. Uh, radio waves. Um, it's all about that confidence and kind of uh, really control the environment as best you can do with your positive energy to really put yourself in a, in a good position. But when it comes to physical interactions, those, those can be unpredictable. Uh, raccoons, run those often. Too often, actually. Um, so is there any question that, that you guys Really just wonder about ghost hunting, paranormal investigating. Yes. Good question. Good question. So the question she asked was. She's lying there in bed, she just feels this presence as she's dreaming. Um, and it's just a, a, a negative presence, a bad, deep, heavy presence. And is that something that she's creating psychologically uh, in your mind? Um, which, the, uh, and it kind of, I do have an answer, or at least a, a version of that. Um, again, the, the haunting aspect is, is more my, my expertise. So when I think of this, with dreams, dreams particularly, I, I don't go into too much. However, I can talk about the energy, the energy, which I think it relates, um, that negative energy. Um, and, I, and I don't, I think she's just a um, Whether you've escalated the scenario in your own mind, um, it may could happen, but I don't think it's as common as we feel it, it may, may be. So if, say you've got a gut feeling, in this instance, say you're, you're not sleeping, you're on your bed, and you do feel that, you do feel weighed down. Um, it very well doesn't mean it has to be a negative energy, but it very well could be um, an energy of sorts that's either A, trying to get your attention, or B, uh, multiple, multiple, a C almost, of, of that, uh, that energy just swirling around, and it's uncomfortable. The one, one of the biggest issues I had when I started this in 99 is my research material was like Unsolved Mysteries, a bunch of books from the library, and, uh, and bookstore, what I can get, and a couple of online articles. I mean, I, I didn't really have any, I didn't have any mentors to look at, there was nothing um, really what I could do besides get educated through, through, through literature of what I could find. So, no one ever really told me that energy, no one, no one. I, I didn't read that in books, um, and I felt it. 
there was moments where I was riding a bike to an investigation spot. The area actually didn't allow cars or anything, so bikes were one of the transportation. So I was riding it with another investigator, and this wall of energy just hit us. It hit us like a ton of bricks. So much so, I had to get off my bike, and I had to push it. Um, and it's so confusing. It's so confusing to me because then and now it's still like science based. There's still ones and zeros of why, why, why that I was so confused on, on what was happening. Why why is it heavier? Um, and in some locations, like some uh, some cemeteries, I would be perfectly fine. And then we get other cemeteries that I would just kick my legs back and be very uncomfortable. And I didn't understand why I had fear. And this took for fear. I, I, I didn't know. Um, once I got more experience with it, once I, I started speaking to folks that, that tinker around with the, uh, with the energy around a lot more than I did then, um, and started to understand that what I was actually feeling was that spiritual energy coming at me. Like, you might be science guy, so this is all like, wait, what, what, what? It made sense, because as I started to push towards that heavier energy, not to say what you're saying, it was still uncomfortable, but again, it was never a negative situation for me. It just, it felt uncomfortable for me. I did not like it. I wanted out of it. Um, but when I pushed towards it, and when I interacted with some devices that I had, I got a really good reaction off of these, and they're consistent. Um, and that just means you putting two and two together and, and getting that on-field, on-site experience. Um, so, yeah, I hope that kind of answered the question a little bit there. Um, good question, absolutely. <laughs> Great question. Yes, they have legs. A uh, spirit town legs. What you have to understand with the I guess the behavior is commonly it is um, it's it's ultimately that consciousness state transitioning from your vessel out into the world. So with your and now with your vessel, your vessel has the, the brain, the computer has everything that kind of builds you up who you're gonna be. Um, ultimately in this version of you know what you're gonna what you're gonna be. Um once that's not an issue and I say that very proudly because my vessel bleeds <laughs> because I, I I'm okay when it comes time to, to shed it. Uh, because we are mortals and everything's amped up. Everything's amped up. But again, consciousness. So I know this wall is here. I pass away. I still know this wall is here. But in my mind, I'm not going to feel comfortable going through this. Um, it's just not going to be something that's common. Not to say there is not an outliers within the community of uh, spiritual energy. Thank you.